Hello and welcome to the Meter Sphere. I am Daniel, your host. Today, uh, just want to make a short video about. Uh, I don't like politics. I despise it. I am a centrist conservative. I hate government. I hate politics. But I want to talk a little bit about. This has to do with a little bit of how culture since Hollywood thinks they have the right to tell people they should defund the police. So that's the subject today. Defunding the cops. What will happen if we defund the cops? Are you nuts? Okay. 90% of cops are great people. I'm just going to put that out there. 90% of cops do their, they get up, they get dressed, they put on their vest, they go to work. They help out their communities. They strive every single day to make sure people are safe and secure in their homes. And their job is to protect life, liberty, and property. That's their job. That is what they're paid to do. And there are elements of people who wish harm to you, your property, and your liberty. And their job is to stop those people. Are there bad cops? Absolutely, and I will tell you this. No one hates a dirty cop more than a good cop. You understand that? Nobody hates a dirty cop more than good cops because they destroy the image of the uniform. Same thing in the Marine Corps. Nobody in the Marine Corps hates a bad Marine than the good Marines because what they do is they they dishonor the uniform. They bring shame to the uniform. And that uniform has been worn through decades. Decades of honorable people. People who've given their life and freedom and everything for everyone. That uniform is a symbol far beyond just the individual. Same with the cops, same with the military. We, we respect that symbol, that uniform. That uniform means more to us than our lives. To defund the police, Hollywood doesn't give a shit. Let's be honest, or the corporations, they don't give two shits about your communities because they are safely guarded by their private security. And I've heard this argument, we, well, we don't want to defend the cops or completely get rid of cops. What we want is to privatize it. You already do. You pay your taxes. Your taxes pay the cops. <laughs> That's just, you can't get much. They're like, well, we want to pay them ourselves. Okay, can you afford it? Do you own, you, <laughs> cops don't get paid shit. Let me say this. Cops get paid absolute trash for the shit they have to deal with. You have no idea. Would you like to go to a person who just got his kid murdered? And have to stand there while listening to the wife, the mother cry, and not be it, and not cry with her. Because you can't, you cannot cry with her. You have to hold it back because you can't show emotion. Showing emotion to any situation is bad. You're supposed to be the professional. If you need, you need to stand there, look professional, act professional, and let the emotions take you over. You're supposed to. Be above and beyond, you know, the call of duty. You go to a murder scene where a woman was raped and murdered. And all you want to do is slit the fucking dude's throat who did it. But you can't because there's laws. There are laws in place to protect even the person who killed that person, raped and murdered that person. Can you imagine going to a home where a fucking child was raped by the father or the uncle? And instead of beating him to death, you have to take him in. Or domestic violence. Can you imagine what it would be like if you go to a... This is a, this is a situation that I had in the academy. Because we're not allowed to, get our, to do anything by our own emotions. We have to follow the letter of the law. And the letter of the law here where I live is the first physical aggressor gets arrested. Do you understand me? The first physical aggressor. One of the 
I went to the police academy. I had a situation. They, they, they do these pop situations to help you learn what kind of situations you'll run into in real life. And they, they, they have kind of people who act, you know, kind of like actors, and they play a part. The part I go into is a guy was sleeping with another woman that wasn't his wife. Wife is out with a friend, came back, found her husband sleeping with him with another woman, hit him with a lamp. The girlfriend had locked herself in another room, and they're all screaming and hitting each other. They were punching, all of them were hitting each other pretty much. So we get the cops get called. We arrive at this at the, the place. You have the husband and in one room. Two wives fucking screaming their the wife and her friends screaming their heads off at you know how he's done, blah blah blah. If you don't know, cops are allowed to interfere in domestic situations. Um, if there's domestic abuse, uh, we can. If if she'll testify, we will, we can take him in. We can advise where they can find help means you know we can give them hey there's are these shelters for women who have been abused there are men don't have that if you're a male and been abused by anyone there's nothing for you I'm sorry but women there are there's shelters created by other people that men aren't allowed in and we're not allowed to t say if you're there or not they're not allowed to say if you're there so if I show up there to get testimony from you the people there will say you're not there because that's their job but anyways I'm getting off track Anyway, I got to the situation. I get there. I have two other people with me. And our job is to take testimony. And so what we do is we broke up. I had one of the other people go talk to the husband. I went in I talked to the two, uh, the wife and her friend. And my other, other guy went in and talked to the girlfriend. And it pretty much, you know, any kind of situation, you know, guy was cheating on his wife. You know, did you know whatever, you know, dirty fucker. I hate cheaters. I do, but that's the problem. Is I'm human and I, I hate certain things, but I can't act on that things. Um. So, in that situation, we ended up kicking the man. I kicked. I had the man removed as I was a leader. I told the man to leave. And I told the wife that if she needs to call the, if she needs us to press charges against him, to let us know because there was a table broken, they both hit each other several times. There, it was so confusing because her friend was saying that he hit her first. The girlfriend said no, she hit him with a lamp first. He he had a cut on his head where the lamp had struck him. So there's all kinds of craziness, okay? This is what real life is going to be like for those people who don't understand. Um, I pretty much, I couldn't arrest anyone. I told the girlfriend to go home. I kicked her out because she was screaming and yelling and all she was causing was more of a scene. So I got, we had one of my guys get her name, address, and phone number so we can contact her later in case we need a testimony from her. And I told her to go home. Because not only was she creating a more volatile situation, then when she was outside, she was not outside screaming. <laughs> the actor, the actor, the actress did pretty good. She stood outside just fucking cussing, telling her she was a bed, you know, all this kind of shit. I kicked the man out. I just said, you know, your presence here is causing problems. You, you know, you cheat on your wife. You need to go. Clear your head. Maybe you go stay with your girlfriend. Your new little girl. Maybe you just need to go to that. But just do not be here. Well, it turned out that I failed the test pretty hard. Because I missed a very, very small detail. My job is to arrest a physical aggressor. That's what they told me. The wife was the initial physical aggressor. She got there, saw her husband sleeping with another woman, lost her shit, slammed a lamp over the dude's head. I know it's fake. You know, this is all pretend, okay? So this actually didn't happen. <laughs> but this is a situation, a uh, simulation, I should say, that they put us through. She hit him over the head with a lamp. He struck her back. So they're both in the wrong. They're absolutely, 
I think she deserved it. But that's not my job. My job is to be professional. So I should have arrested the wife. Can you imagine how that feels for that cop? You know what I imagine? If I not only have to go to court, they all you know go in front of a judge and the judge goes, Hey cop, why didn't you arrest her? She hit him with a lamp. That a law says the first physical aggressor goes to jail. And I would be like, well, I felt that that was unnecessary. Well, it doesn't matter what I feel. The matter was what the law. So yeah, imagine what a cop would feel like if you were in that situation where a man is cheating on his wife, she reacts emotionally, hits him. Now you have to arrest a wife. Shitty, isn't it? But that's, cops don't make the law. Cops aren't the person who's supposed to, we're reactionary force. That's the cop's job. They can't predict crime. Can you imagine if they could? That'd be ter you know, that's terrifying. You know, they, what is there? There's a movie like that where cops can see the future, or have a machine see the future, so they just arrest anyone because they might have the potential of doing crimes. Oh, that'd be terrifying. Um, but, they're reactionary. They get to a situation. They have to assess uh, what's going on. They have to take everybody at their word. And they know everybody will be lying to them. No, it's fact. Everybody lies. Uh, so, you know, I do feel bad for the man who died. That was a dirty cop who did a fucked up thing. And he deserves to go to prison. And the cops are with them. You must understand what it's like in the in a police force okay when you're a rookie you're absolutely trash in the marine corps we call those boots they are the new people your word is nothing you are nothing but the scum on the bottom of my boot that is why they're called boots your job is never to question your superiors ever your job is to do what they tell you at all times because your life and theirs are on the line, uh, <laughs> especially in the military. If your team leader tells you to do something and you don't do it, <laughs> he's gonna beat your ass. You know how many times I like fucked up and they beat my ass. Oh, Marine Corps is uh, it's not for everyone, but you learn. That's what life is. You learn, and and I, I you know, the cops are the same way. You you go. You're the first one on you know in a in a police force. You're a rookie. You don't know anything about the streets. You don't know anything at all. And you get a training officer, and that training officer is going to tell you what to do. And your your job is not to question it, which I do think is a problem. Because if you see your training officer doing something you believe is wrong, you should be able to report him. But the problem is, you're reporting him to a captain or a lieutenant who's been best buddies with that man for years. Who's probably saved his life several times. You must understand, there's a brotherhood when you're in a certain organization. The Marine Corps, we become closer than blood. We have each other's backs no matter what. We go to a bar and my buddy starts a fight. I got his back, I don't care why he started or what happened to start it. We got each other's backs. I will beat everyone around him. He will do the same for me, no matter what, because that's what, that's the brotherhood that the Marines had together. Cops, not so much different, especially when they served years and years and years together where they had to go into, especially in bigger cities. You must understand that some of these cities are so dangerous in certain areas that cops going in it have like an 80% chance of dying. And they know it. So they go in there with, that's why there's like five or six of them always together because they're always having, they're, they're worried they're gonna die. And they're thinking about their families back home. I understand that. And I, it, they're not, they don't wanna be there. You think a cop wants to be in a situation where it's life and death? I know I never would. <laughs> you know, I have family members that are cops. And I, one of them has never, he had to take his weapon out ever and I'm glad for that you know Marine Corps was a lot different we had to and yeah so 
It didn't matter who the enemy was, kids or grown-ups. If they pulled a weapon and pointed it at my brother, I would down them in less than a second. I would feel nothing for it. Absolutely nothing. I don't care. I don't care if it's a kid. I don't care if it's a grown-up or a woman. If you pull a gun and point it at one of my brother Marines, you're a dead. You're, you're dead. And I'm, I'm going to walk over your dead body and not think twice of it. Because that person right beside me, that brother, means more to me than my own life. So that is a mentality a lot of cops have. You know, they know each other's wives, they know each other's kids, they know each other's this. I'm not saying that's the best thing. But I'm saying this is the cop life. You must understand what it's like before you start talking about defunding them. Say you defund them and you go private security. Uh, you're going to have to pay way more for private security than you would uh, public police. They're going to demand a whole lot more money. And they don't care about you. It's all about the money to them. So they're going to go in your neighborhoods and they're going to treat people far worse than a cop would. Because they're getting paid way more money and you know, I try to trust me, these private security, especially like military private, you know, private militaries, uh, will murder entire villages for nothing. They're paid either way. As long as they get paid, they don't give a crap about you. They'll burn your village down and laugh and go back with hundreds of thousands of dollars. <laughs> That's why Blackwater is no longer in Iraq. You know why? It's because they burned villages to the ground and stole so much of their natural treasures. <laughs> but I mean, that's not what it's about. So, you know, you can't afford it. So they're going to protect who can. Private security only protect who pays them to, to protect them, and that's it. Anybody on the outside is fucking gone. They don't give a shit about you. So let's say a couple companies run by fucking mobs or fucking gangsters pay their fucking private security. But hey guys, they own them. So now the drug lords in your fucking neighborhoods that are passing drugs aren't going to get touched by the fucking private security. But if you try to stand up to it, you're going to get shot. And not only left to die, they're going to hide your body in some fucking river somewhere. <laughs> the people have no idea what they're wanting. You don't get it. Cops don't get paid much, and you know a lot of them do it because they are they believe it's they've been called to do it, not because they want to do it. Ugh, yes, I do think that there needs to be a relook at, at uh, police training. They need to. Um, there needs to be a, a stricter hiring requirements. I'm overweight. That's why I never became a... One of the reasons why I never became a cop. Because I never, I felt like I was too overweight to do a good job as a cop. I was not in a healthy condition right now. Give me a second. I know. A little loud, right? But anyways, I'm trying to let them go by. I'm sorry for the noise. I know it's loud. Trucks are backing up in my area. Um, so back on back on task. <sighs> Private getting rid of these Hollywood people. You know, they don't give a shit about you as long as you don't affect their little you know, neighborhoods, they can care less. That's why they support these fucking, the rioters. And they're like, yeah, riot, yeah, burn, because you're not burning down their homes. These rioters went to Hollywood and started burning down these multi-million dollar mansions and stealing all their shit. Uh, you'll see Hollywood change their tune faster than anything. And it is a shame. I know there are, these people, what's going to happen when these companies leave? That's my question. You know, these companies that you looted and burned, Targets and Walmarts and Amazon, and these people do not care about you. It's about their money. They were there supporting your neighborhoods with their businesses. 
They, they provided you jobs. They provided you uh, food and clothing and all the stuff you could buy in their stores. And he burned it and stole it. And guess what? These companies are going to look and see if it's worth it. They're gonna, the people in charge are going to be like, is it worth the risk to have to pay out our ass to fix it, fix the buildings, rebuild the buildings, and then restock them? Or should we just leave? I have a feeling a lot of these companies are going to fucking leave. They're going to say, not worth it. It's not worth the time, it's not worth our effort, and it's not worth our being having to worry about it. what happens after we just build it again. And they burn it back down. Nope, they're going to fucking leave. And now you're going to have a lot of communities, especially these black poor communities, who rely on these jobs, who rely on these small businesses, who rely on the bigger businesses sometimes, and now they got nothing. You know, I, I was watching one of... Um, uh, it, it, uh, I can't remember, I'm sorry. One of the other YouTubers, and he said that he's from Chicago. Uh, is it, it's a Gundam, maybe? No? It might be it's a Gundam. I can't, I, I think it, it's one of those guys. Um, I think it was. Yeah, it's, it's a Gundam. He made a video about from because he's from Chicago. And that in a five mile radius, there is no place to buy food. There's no stores because they're all been destroyed. Five miles. I know a lot of people don't have cars in these big cities. They walk to work. They walk to get their food. They walk home. Now they're going to walk 10 miles or more to find no nearest grocery store. And you know, these BLM guys, the organization, they come and they go. They get bust in, funded by people who don't give a shit about you. They, they only show up when it's politically convenient for them. And then they leave. So, how does that make you feel? If you were a person who lived in these neighborhoods who, especially some of these poor mothers who are single, say like some of these single moms who work their ass off two jobs, go home, with, find out not only are their businesses burned to the ground, so they can't make money to buy their food, but the places they buy their food are burned down, and now their homes are on fire with their kids trapped inside and the rioters are preventing the firefighters from putting out the fire. Because that's stunning and fucking brave. And the media praises the rioters because they are constitutionally in their right to burn it all down. No, they're not. Media fucking lies to you. Media love this shit. Let me tell you, this is the greatest weeks in like four years for them. Why? Eyes are on the cameras. People are watching the media. People are like eating it like fucking. The media are the enemy of people. Donald Trump's right about that. The, the mainstream media is absolutely the enemy of the American people. They used to be for us. Now, they're bought out by political powers. And whatever political power that they are bought out by, make sure that the news puts them in a better light. Period. They don't care about truth. They don't care about honesty. They don't give a shit about us. All they care about is their ratings and whoever fucking owns them. Period. I mean, I think the federal government needs to crack down on them. Say, you know, if you if you come out with a false, blatant false story, you lose your media rights. Period. Or get fined a million fucking dollars. You know how quickly this shit would stop? Fucking CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, all these fuckers would just stop. They'd be like, oh, fuck. Because now they don't have 
I would ban, they would literally lose their media rights to any government facility, period. Means they have no more access. They cannot go to the White House anymore. They can't go to government. They can't go to the governor's or the mayor's office to get stories. They can't go anywhere. It would cripple them, period. That's what we need. We need such a strong, uh, such a, um, if you promote falsely, if you lie on purpose to twist a narrative of a story to your own political leaning, you will be destroyed, period. I don't care if you're left, I don't care if you're right. Facts and evidence must be in every single article. That's how it used to be. You don't remember papers? If papers came out with a false story, they had to front page redact the story, apologize to the person they redacted, they got sued for, for blatant lies, then they fired the reporter, the, the person who wrote the story, fired and shamed. They would never work in that, they would never be able to get another job as a newspaper reporter, ever. Bring that back. Bring it back. If Don Lennon sits on camera and he spots fucking lies, because he knows he does, and he gets caught doing it, they don't make a little tiny article on the bottom like, I'm sorry that our last dream was wrong. No, he gets fired. CNN gets sued. They lose their government access. And he can never work a job again if he lies. And that goes for everyone. Everyone who calls themselves reporters or calls themselves media. Because your job is to tell the American people facts and evidence. And there is none. This whole, the cop was racist, there's no fucking evidence that he was a racist. He's a shitty cop who fucked up, yes. But no, there's no evidence that he did it, you know, because he woke up that morning and said, I want to kill this guy. Could he have? I don't know. Facts and evidence. That's what I want to see. I said that with everything. Believe women? No. I believe facts and I believe evidence. And I don't believe just short little phone videos. You need more than just one video from one angle to prove a point. You need what came before it, what came after it, and what caused it. And I hope there's more videos out there of all of that because that's what you need and not edited videos. I'm so sick of seeing edited videos pop up on fucking, you know, Facebook and shit. Like, oh, cop brutality, cop brutality. When it turns out the dude struck the cop first and you just mm, kind of deleted that point out or you went for his gun. I suggest that to no one. Never grab a gu cop's gun. You do, you're dead. We are trained. If you touch my gun, I shoot you period because that action of going for my weapon means that you want me dead period that's what it means if you go try to take a cop's gun that means you want the cop to die and that cop is going to defend his life to the very bitter end and the cops around him will do exactly the same oh. I know this is a longer video than I had earlier I don't know if all the a thumbnail about it or not but I'm telling you guys do not public do not go private security for your police force if you think that's the answer you're nuts because the people with the money are the ones they're gonna protect period that's their job they're gonna protect those who pay them to protect you think it's gonna be you you gonna think it's gonna be the you know the mother of the single mother of three that they're going to care about? No. Mm -mm. It's a bigger business. Or it's going to be the guys who had the more money. And I'm telling you, some of these fucking thugs have lots of money. Drug lords have tons and tons of money to throw around. You think they, they're going to they're gonna get a hold of the private security guy and go, Hey, we'll give you a million dollars to leave us fuck alone. Private security guy will be like, Done. And then you're going to see them guard fucking drug transports. Because they don't give a fuck about the law. 
private security aren't beholden by the law. Cops are. <laughs> you guys, oh, that's why these cops are going to jail. You think private security, if they shoot you dead, are going to go to jail? No. They didn't care. They got video of it. You know what's going to happen? They're going to find the people who took video of it and they're going to kill you. <laughs> uh, yeah. They rather have no witnesses than anybody. You know, it's just. You're going to step into a very dark place. Or you're going to get rid of the cops completely and the criminals are going to completely take over. Because they will. You think they're going to wait? Mm -mm. They're going to be like, all right, no cops in this city. Let's go. It's going to be a haven. Oh. I'm sorry. That's exactly what it is. There's going to be no one left to defend you. There's no one to call. Who are you going to call? When you watch someone get raped in your house, you someone... Three, ten, ten people bust into your fucking apartment. You got no gun because you're, you're a fucking shitty ass state or a city, shitty ass city that thinks that guns are violence and they took all away. And now you have no way to defend yourself. Now there's ten, ten dudes in your room. Your single, your wife in the next room. They beat you to a living pulp, tie you to a chair, and fuck your wife in front of you. Congratulations! You have no cops to come do anything about it because after they leave, guess what? No cops to investigate. You're just gonna get up, untie, finally get untied, hold your wife close as she cries on your shoulder, tells you how worthless you are as a man for allowing her to be raped. You're gonna want vengeance, but you're just gonna. What are you gonna avenge against? There's no, there's no law, there's no order. Congratulations, you won. Thank God I don't live in your fucking cities. <sighs> Clown world. <sighs> Congratulations. I hope you guys are happy. To the fandom out there, I know it's not you. I know most of you guys are not in on this stuff. You you want this all to end as much as we do. This is a video mainly to just get a new insight on what's going on. You know, there's so many people being shot now. The riot started because of one death. One. More people have died from the rioters than I've seen I probably all year. I think this COVID crap has probably killed less people than have now died in the riot. <laughs> I wouldn't even be that... It'll probably add it on to the COVID. Oh, that guy got shot in the face, but he had COVID, so we're going to put it in the COVID death. Oh... Uh, this is why we have escapism. This is why we need our books and our TV shows and our movies so we can get away from this fucking planet for a minute. From this fucking reality. This clown fucking world. Thank you, Az. He was very basic. This is the greatest fucking thing you've ever said. We are literally in the Twilight Zone and it's fucking nuts. And it's getting weirder and weirder and stupider and stupider. This will blow over. I think this will blow after the elections. Whoever becomes elected. Maybe, maybe not. Or get time, ten times worse. Because, yeah. Anyways, I don't know. It's 2020, people. Fucking 2020. People are lost their fucking minds. And these governors aren't doing shit for you. They should, everybody who lives in these cities, who let who watch their neighborhood gets burned down, it's time to call your governor and your mayor and tell them don't expect my taxpayer money this year. Period. Because you cannot protect my life, my liberty, and my property. You do not deserve my taxes. That is literally what my taxes are paid going to you for so you can keep my roads safe and you know clean and to protect my life liberty and property and they failed at both of those because you know we, we all know that they cannot take care of roads where the shit so yay us guess we're on our own this is why this the fucking gun debate done 
I don't want to hear shit about how the government will protect you. You don't need an AR-15 because the government has them. What are you going to shoot? A deer with an AR-15? No, I'm going to shoot a fucking 10 people break into my house going for my wife. That's who's going to get shot with my AR-15. And I know how to shoot a fucking AR-15. So I'm going to put, put two in your, man, your center chest and I'm going to put one through your eye socket. And then I'll walk up and kick you in the head. <laughs> Just to make sure. It's called death death checks. We have a thing in the military. We either flick you in the eyeball or we kick you in the nuts. That's how we check and make sure you're dead. That's how we check terrorists. When we shot a terrorist dead, just to make sure he was dead, he wasn't trying to hide it and you know, blow himself up or something. <coughs> uh, I just... I hope this ends. I will never kneel. I don't give a shit who comes in my comments and says, BLM, BLM, fuck you, you're a racist. I don't give a shit. I do not support BLM. I do not support Antifa. Period. Ever. Because they are politically motivated to burn our country down. Antifa are paid terrorists. Domestic terrorists. And I'm glad the hopefully the FBI is true that the FBI is going after these fuckers because they need to you know find them, find the people who are paying them and put them in Gitmo. <laughs> Bag over your head, Gitmo. Welcome to Gitmo. That would end this shit. BLM, find a leadership. Find who's funding them. Find the political people pulling their strings. Because you know it's there. You think but BLM, the organization, isn't being funded and paid by an political people pulling little puppet strings because they are they're like nee, 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 nee. we want our power what they want is power and I st they, they see as using the black community as puppets for their political gain congratulations you playing right to them because you get rid of their police you get rid of this they get to public they get to fund the cops you want your politician to own the, the literally own your only security force in your city? Because that's not going to go bad ever. <laughs> Jeez. China? You want China. You want you want your cities to turn into China where the cops are literally owned by the politicians because they literally pay their entire finance. And so the taxpayers paying through taxes as we do now, literally the military, the, multi-millionaire dude who made millions somehow about being a politician being a public servant now pays the entire private security you remember Spider-Man the, the, PS4, the PS4 game you know how the dude owned his own private security force and brought him to fucking New York you remember how well that went in the game because that's your reality that is Cops are no longer able to do anything. The private security is going to have arms and weapons and tanks far greater than, you know, the cops could ever have. They'll have high-powered weapons. Private security come in fully geared for war. You're, you're talking military police. That That's what they're going to be. They're going to walk around with fucking AKs. You fuck around and they're going to shoot you dead, toss your body into a ditch where their own fucking vehicles will come pick your damn ass up, throw you in a burn pit somewhere, and burn you to ash. That is your future. Congratulations, idiots. You listen to Hollywood, because Hollywood doesn't give two shits. They already got their private security, and those private securities will kill you if you try to come onto their property. Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. All right. I've rambled on enough. I know it's got long, but this is just something I had to get off my chest. And I was just sick of it, especially on Twitter. It's fucking, this is why I never want to get on Twitter. I got on Twitter because I wanted to connect with people so I could do YouTube videos. But Jesus Christ, that place is a cesspool. All right, y'all. Stay safe. For those who live in these cities, move. It's time to get out. If you think it's going to improve, it's not. 
it's maybe it's about maybe it's time to come to rural America. You know, you think we're a bunch of rednecks, we're really not. We're just guys who want to live life and want. We care about our communities and we care about our small towns. Just don't bring your violence here. Do not bring violence into our. We have enough problems, especially my community. We have enough problems with tornadoes and natural disasters. We do not need people trying to burn down our town because we will not stand for it. Period. We will defend each other to the death. So, stay safe out there, guys. And, you know, welcome to Clown World. <laughs> Jeez.